Hello, my name is Maria de Souza. I'm the founder of Posture Queen. This is a place for you to learn all things good posture and movement for a life without pain. Today I'm coming to you with another lesson of the series Feldenkrais Heals One Lesson at a Time. Today's lessons, lesson is all about movement in a pelvis, which is very important for the movement of the torso. But this will have a major, major impact in the alignment of your spine. So it's a very good movement to address um, misalignments in the spine for better posture. It will also address pains and aches that you might have in your back, the shoulders and the neck. So see what it does for you. So start standing and feel your feet on the floor, have your feet separated hip distance apart or a little bit more if that is more comfortable for you. And have a good sense for your feet on the floor and notice where the weight of your body is. Is it more in one foot than the other? And how is the contact of your feet on the floor? How much of your feet you feel in contact with the floor? Is there more the heels? Is there more the front of the feet? In other words, where is the weight of your body on your feet? Is it more towards the front or the back or the sides? And just notice, without correcting anything, just notice what's there for you. And just have a sense for your uprightness as well. Since your head sitting on top of your spine. Good. And then after you have explored that, we are going to lie on the floor. So come and lie on the floor. And once you lie on the floor, just take a moment to arrive and just feel yourself on the ground. Notice how you're feeling lying on the floor, what areas, what parts of your body are I'm asking for your attention. Does it feel uncomfortable somewhere? And notice how comfortable or not comfortable is it for you to lie on the floor like this. Notice where, where it doesn't feel comfortable, if anywhere. Notice how much of yourself is in contact to the floor. Notice the, back, the uh, heels resting on the floor. Notice what parts are pressing down. Notice the back of your legs. The lower legs and the thighs. Notice if you have a space behind your knees. Notice your buttocks resting on the floor. Notice if one side presses more than the other. Notice if there is a difference there between the, the right side of your pelvis and the left. Which side feels more in contact with the floor. Then notice the whole of your back in contact with the floor. Notice if you feel a gap in your lower back, a space that doesn't touch the floor. See if you can sense your shoulder blades. And is the pressure on the floor of one shoulder blade different to the other? Notice what parts of your back touch the floor, what parts don't. 
and notice the back of your head, notice how your head feels in relation to your spine. Keep a few mental notes of all the of these things that you have found for yourself, so that at the end we can come back to it and see if anything changed for you. And now bring your feet on the floor by bending one leg at a time, bringing the slide the heel up towards your buttocks and then lifting the knee up and then do that to the other side and ground your feet. And find a place, the right place for your feet. So move your feet forwards and back and to the sides and closer to each other. But have a gap between your knees and the feet. And more or less hip distance apart. And your heel should be more or less under your knee joints. But find a comfortable place, a place for your feet where you feel that your legs are being supported. And that and that you're not struggling to keep your um, knees up. And these movements we, have going to, we are going to do with the pelvis might be movements that you haven't done before. And if you find it difficult or you can't get it, don't worry too much about it. Just do what you can and you can always come back and repeat these lessons and I promise the more you do the more you're going to find those movements in your hip joints and the better the coordination will be. So from here you're going to start rocking your pelvis back and forth so start pressing the feet on the floor and as you press the feet on the floor move the pelvis back so that you gently press the lower back onto the floor so that is rolling back and ro rolling forwards you do the opposite movement you move the pelvis forward so that you arch the lower back ever so slightly only going as far as it is comfortable and carry on with these two movements, rocking the pelvis back and forth. Slowly, gently, no rush. And notice how your feet presses gently on the floor to help you with this movement of rocking the pelvis back and forth. So one way you arch the lower back, the other way you press the lower back onto the floor ever so gently. And notice what else is moving in your torso. So you are only asking for the pelvis to move, but notice how much movement you can feel in your spine, in your ribs, in your head. Can you feel that your chin comes towards the chest when you arch the lower back and away from the chest when you press the lower back on the floor? And if that movement of the head is not happening, see how you can create an invitation for the head to move with the pelvis or for the head to, to um, react to the movement of the pelvis. So you should feel a movement in your head. It doesn't need to be big. But if you feel a small movement, that's enough. And carry on with this movement back and forth in the pelvis. And you might um, notice that as you go along with this movement, you might notice that the head it's happier to cooperate with the pelvis, but remember not to force the head 
or create the movement from the head. Just allow the head to respond to the movement of the pelvis. Back and forth. Notice your breath, your breathing. And you do this movement back and forth for a minute or so, or two minutes, for as long as you feel comfortable to do it for. But do it at least for a minute. Okay, and then come to a neutral position, just stay here for a moment, just resting and feeling your spine, your back on the floor. And now we're going to rock the pelvis from side to side. So this time the feet presses on the floor one at a time. So you're going to press one foot on the floor so that you can lift ever so slightly one side of the pelvis to rock to one side and then back down and then the other foot, press the other foot and rock, lift the other side of the pelvis away from the floor to rock to the other side. And carry on with this. But remember to keep your knees pointing upward so you don't want to be swinging um, the legs or the knees you want the legs to be as quiet as possible so that the movement is in the pelvis and not in the legs so it's like you're sticking your bum out to the side or showing your bum to someone that is next to you So as it, your, your torso is on the floor, your shoulders are on the floor, it's just the pelvis that lifts one side at a time to rock to side to side. And notice what your head is doing. Are you fixing your head in the middle or are you allowing the head to go with the pelvis? So again, don't force the head to go anywhere, just allow the head to cooperate or respond to the movements of the pelvis. And if your head is not moving, then create an intention for the head to move with the pelvis. And again, it's not a big movement in a head. It can only be a tiny little movement and that is enough. And notice how does it feel that movements in the pelvis for you. Does one side feel different to the other? It's very possible that it feels different. And just notice what the differences are. Maybe one side feels more familiar than the other. Maybe one side is easier to rock than the other. Maybe you feel some tension or even um, some strain in one side of the pelvis, just notice what there, as long as it is not painful, carry on. If it is painful, then you need to either try to go slower and more gently, and if it's still painful, then please stop.
So remember to keep your knees quiet, your legs quiet. Of course there is a little movement in the legs, but you don't want to be swinging the legs from side to side. And again, do this for a few minutes, one, two, three minutes, for as long as it feels good for you. It is a great movement to realign the pelvis, realign the spine, to release some tension you may have around the torso, the neck, the shoulders. A few more times. Allow the head to follow the movement of the pelvis as opposed to move the head for the sake of moving the head. But allow the movement to start in the pelvis and then allow the head to move as it wants. Okay, and then bring this to a close and bring the legs down just for a little rest. So bring one knee towards the floor and slide the heel away and then the other. Just coming back to, to this restful position. And just notice while you resting here, notice if anything may feel different for you in the relationship between yourself and the floor. Notice if, for instance, you feel that there is more of yourself in contact with the floor. Notice if anything around your pelvis feels different. And very gently just roll the head to one side, notice how that goes, how that feels. Do that a couple of times to one side, notice how far you can go, how easy, smooth that movement is or not. And then try the other side and just notice the differences between rolling the head to one side and the other side. Okay, and then bring the head to the center and bring your feet on the floor once again. Find the right place for your feet to support your legs. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take um, the pelvis around in a circle, but we are going to do that in phases. So imagine that you have a clock sitting on top of your pelvis and as you look down you see the six o'clock is towards your feet, twelve o'clock is towards your head and then you have nine o'clock to your right 
and three o'clock to your left. And what we're going to do now is to take the pelvis around the clock, but we are going to do half moons each time. So picture your clock in your mind and then come to 12 o'clock where you have to gently press the lower back onto the floor and then move the pelvis towards one o'clock so that will be towards your left hand side and then bring it back to 12 and then from 12 you're going again to one and then to two o'clock and then back to one and 12 and really so every time so what we're going to do is to go through every each hour on the left hand side until we reach six o'clock and every time you come to 12 you can rest for a second and then start again okay let's do it so 12 o'clock and then one o'clock two o'clock and three o'clock and then two one twelve and then twelve one two three four o'clock and then three two one twelve and carry on this way this way until you reach six o'clock so twelve one two three four five o'clock four three two one twelve so every time you go around you're going to go one more hour and then all the way back so twelve one two three four five and six o'clock so you did the whole left side of the clock and then here we're going to do a few times that side of the clock so come um, from six come all the way to two o'clock and then two sorry all the way down to all the way up to 12 o'clock and then from 12 you're going again through every single hour all the way down to six o'clock and carry on this way do that a few times from six to five four three two one twelve twelve one two three four five six six five four three two one twelve and carry on this way a few more times on that side of the clock so we're doing half moons on the left hand side but every time you do it you visualize every single hour on the dial so don't rush from 12 to 6 and 6 to 12 but do it slowly so that you can reach deep in your um, pelvic floor muscles and just notice how does it feel for you to go around that side of the clock is it a smooth half circle or not so notice where you may find some tension and if you find some tension you can stay there a little bit and move back and forth until you can feel that tension releasing and as you go from 6 to 12 12 to 6 you probably will feel that there'll be hours on the dial on that side that are more clear to you and others that are not so much clear just notice that Breathing in and out. Okay, and then 
let that go, come to a neutral position for a moment and just feel that side of your pelvis, notice the differences between one side and the other. And now we are going to do the other side, so you're going again from 12 o'clock to 11, and then 11 back to 12, 12, 11, 10, 10, 11, 12, 12, 11, 10, 9, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 12, 10, ele sorry, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, and 6. So you reach the full half moon on that side of the clock, which is your right hand side, and now move from 6 to 12 and 12 to 6 on that right side of the clock. And just again we visualize every single hour on that side of the clock and don't rush from 12 to 6 and 6 to 12. But just go slowly and touching every single hour on that side of the clock. Just notice if this side feels different to the other side. Keep your knees as quiet as possible. Notice what hours on that side of the floor are more clear in your imagination. Can you visualize every single hour on that side or are they hours that are not so clear? Okay, and then you can let that go and be in a neutral position just for a moment and just feel that side of your pelvis. Notice what that did to you, notice wherever you feel. I can feel that 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 right side of my lower back is feeling it, so I just pay attention to that. It's not pain, but I can feel that that side of the lower back, those muscles around the lower back. I've worked hard, so probably I was putting too much strain on that side. Let me just notice if you feel anything like that as well. And now what we're going to do is we are going to take the pelvis around in a full circle. So start with whatever direction comes natural to you. And this time just take the pelvis around the whole circle of the clock. And just notice how that feels. You feel that is a nice round circle or it's not so much of a circle, it's more oval. And is it smooth or is it just jerky movement? Just notice. And if you find that the movement is not so smooth, just go a little bit slower and see how you can improve that smoothness in the pelvis. And of course, if this is the very first time you're doing this movement, it's going to feel awkward, or 
your nervous system is probably asking what is this about don't worry too much about just do what you can and go slowly and gently and then every time you come back to do this movement you notice that each time will become more clear and easier to do so go around around the same side the same way for a few times and again just notice every single hour in the clock as you go around the dial and notice the movements in your torso notice the movements in your head is your head moving and kind of mir mirroring the movement of your pelvis And if you feel that your head is not moving very much, see if you can create that intention without forcing the head to go anywhere, but see if you can create that intention for the head to communicate with the pelvis. And if that doesn't happen, don't worry, just come back to do this lesson a few more times and you'll be surprised how much things will improve for you. Okay, and then let this go. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Come to a neutral position for a moment. And then go the other way around. Notice if going the other way around the movement, the quality of the movement is different. Again, be aware, notice every single hour on the dial. And again, notice those, go through those explorations you went, you went on the other side, notice if the movement feels smooth or not so, notice if it feels a round circle or more of an oval kind of shape or if there are areas that they feel more like lines, straight lines. Just notice what's going on in your pelvis. And I promise that if you come back to do these movements a few more times, the smoothness of the pelvis will, be, will improve and things will become smoother and the movement more clear, clear to you. Again, no, again notice the movements in your torso, the spine, the ribs, the head. So you want when we move the pelvis, you, we, we want we need that the head reacts to that movement as well because the, the pelvis is attached to the spine and spine is attached to the head. So we need to integrate all these parts and improve the communication from part to part. So that as we go through the day doing things, we don't create strain and, and, and injury when we do things like reaching out for something on a top shelf or bending over to grab something from the floor. So if they, if the body works together as a team then we can avoid all kinds of strains and injuries okay and then you can bring this to a close come to a neutral position and stay here for a moment 
and then bring your legs down one knee at a time, lengthen the legs and just come down just to rest for a moment and just feel yourself on the ground. Just notice that connection between yourself and the ground. Now bring your legs up and your feet on the floor once again. And then go back to the very first movement that you did, rocking the pelvis back and forth. So remember, uh, as you move the pelvis forward, you press the lower back onto the floor. As you move the pelvis back, you arch the lower back. And just make that movement a few times again. And just notice how that movement feels now. Is it clear and um, better? Um, is a clear movement for you, easier to do, more fluid, maybe more coordinated. And notice the movement of your head. Is, it, is the head moving a little bit more now with the pelvis? Notice how this movement feels, may feel a little bit different from the very first time you did it today. Okay, and then let that go and bring your legs long on the floor. And just stay here for a moment, just notice how you're feeling lying on the floor. And if you go back to those mental notes from the very beginning, how does it feel now? Notice what feels different. Also, do you remember if it was comfortable to lie on the floor? And if it wasn't so comfortable, how does it feel now? How much of yourself is now in contact with the floor? Notice your pelvis, the back. Notice that gap in your lower back. How does it feel now? Can you have a better sense for your shoulder blades? And how does your head feel lie on the floor in relation to your spine? And gently just turn your head to one side a couple of times, notice if that feels different. And then to the other side. And just stay here for a moment, just letting everything go. And then from you, we're going to stand. So roll to one side and coming up slowly and gently to standing. And now in standing, just go through those same explorations as you did at the very beginning. So notice your feet on the floor. See if you can feel any difference. Notice the weight on your feet, on the left and on the right. Can you feel that the weight of your body is more or better distributed on your feet? Can you have a better sense of the contact of your feet on the floor? And have a sense for your uprightness and notice how that feels. Notice how the head connects with the spine. Thank you for doing this lesson with me and I'll see you again at a different lesson. Bye bye now.